This time I'm going to show you how to make a work drawing for our wheel. And for this one, I'm going to let you pick the paper size. You can either pick C or you can pick A. Either one works for this. It just kind of depends on how you place your dimensions in. Uh, for if A works better or if C works better. C is nice because then you can spread your dimensions out. A works better if you're going to kind of cluster them. So I will leave that completely up to you because you're going to need to decide how you want to add your dimensions in. All right, so first things first, we need to bring in our base. Uh, it brought it in one-to-one, -one, which for the C size paper that I picked out is a bit too small. So I'm going to switch it to two-to-one because that's a much better size. And here is our front view. I'm going to place it right here. I'm going to place in a side view. That's our right side view. An isometric view. Uh, I'm not quite sure where to put this. Yeah, I'll put it right there. All right, click OK. So I didn't add in a top view. The reason for that is I'm now going to add in a section view. So remember, you got to click a little bit outside. Go straight across. Click a little bit outside. Now right click, continue, and then click OK. All right, so make sure if you do this that, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, see this little bit of an elbow here? Don't have that against your object. If you do that, it causes some kind of funky things. Uh, sometimes over here, if it looks like there's like a little bite out of it, uh, typically because you put this too close. So watch out for that. All right, another thing that's a little bit new is we're going to add in a backside. So there's two ways you can do this. We can click on this, click on projected, and place it in. Or we can double click on this. Uh, oop, I guess we can only do that for the front view. But I'll just show you that for the front view. So if I double click on this, I can actually add in other views. So that's what I was referring to. I guess we can't do that with the right side. So for the right side, you can click on projected. If you haven't already clicked our right side, then you click on it. And here is our back. So right click, create. Okay. So we have our views. I'm going to make sure this one is shaded. And sometimes we can't really see what we're doing for dimensions or everything is going to get very cluttered very quickly. Uh, in this one, I know it will. So we're going to use a detail view. This one's new. And what we're going to do is I want a detail of this and kind of this edge too. So I'm going to click right in the middle of roughly what I want to do. Uh, I'm going to click again and kind of put in a little bit of a bubble. So I can move that down here. And if I want, I can go in and kind of tighten this up a little bit. So maybe I'm going to move it over here. Maybe shrink in the circle a little bit because it doesn't need to be as big. And you see that this updated automatically compared to what I did over there. And if you do decide to shrink it, uh, make sure you don't kind of nip that little edge right there. All right, and you can see that our scale for this is now twice the scale of the rest of our work drawing. So that's the default, is just twice as big. The other one that I want to bring in is uh, this one over here. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the middle right here and go about there. And place it right there. So the reason why I just didn't zoom in on just this little piece is when you add this, uh, sometimes you have some problems if you don't include this edge or a edge of your object. All right, so I'm going to kind of shrink this a bit. Maybe move this over. And move it a little bit more. Oh, we can see I kind of got into there. So. Let's see, make it a little bit larger. There we go. And just make sure when you have this, so this one's C for mine. I might be a different letter for yours. Uh, just make sure the C isn't going right here. Just make sure it's by itself. All right. Uh, so we still need to add in some things, like our center marks. So I'm just going to add those in real quick so you can kind of see where they need to be. As you can tell, there are going to be a lot of them. All right, so I'm putting them on here and not on here because it's a little bit different. Because um, this, if you look from here, it's rounded. Okay, and the information that we would get from here is actually easier to tell what it is from here. 
Um, so it kind of goes with the uh, the fillet and round scenario for which one you should add the center marks to and which ones you shouldn't. Um, kind of use your best judgment. All right, and then center lines. There are going to be a lot of these. Oh, clicked on the wrong line there. So I got to undo it and put it back in. So remember, there's two different uh, center line types. The center line bisector, I like because you can click across and then it just places it in. The other one is just your regular center line. So green dot, green dot, create. So that's how you would place that one in, and oh, I missed one. All right, so I'll just show you how to do it for this one also. So our green dot and a green dot. All right, so the reason why I added in all the center marks is I just want to show you um, something for dimensioning. So you have all of these over here, these wedges that you're going to need to dimension. So to dimension angles, you're going to click on the line. Do not get the green dots. They will give you problems. Click on now the center mark, and then you can bring it over. All right, and we can do the same thing over here. And then for these, just make sure they line up nicely when you add these in. Sometimes they're a little bit hard to place in. All right, so that's what you can do on this side, or you can do it on this side, depending on how you want to place it in. Uh, if you don't think you need the back side, then you can just go ahead and delete it. It's really up to you how you want to place it in, so you can see how if you move this in. You have a lot less information now if you kind of condense it, so it might fit on an A size compared to what you want. So. I will leave that completely up to you if you want to have this back view or not. So if you think everything over here is getting too cluttered, start moving it over here, especially for these uh, little cutouts. All right, and one thing that students tend to forget is this over here. All right, so I'm going to dimension just one of these. Remember the green dot kind of gets in your way. All right, so what I added to the end of this is TYP for typical. So space, cap locks, TYP, or just hold shift. The reason for that is we have this one, this one over here, this one, and this one, and same on the other side, that are all the same size. And right now, some of you are probably thinking, that's not the number I added in originally. So you can actually change the precision on it to give you more decimal places. Okay, oh. there's only three. Okay, so that's what you can do if you want to have your work drawing be more accurate compared to the assignment. Uh, if you do forget that, don't worry, I will not take off points for that, but it is something to make your work drawing a little bit more accurate compared to the handout. Alright, so Remember, when you're adding these in, make sure everything's all linked together. You can see how all of these are linked nicely. If you just move the front view, you can see how everything else moves. And don't forget, fill in title block, and make sure you add the rest of your dimensions. All right, so good luck.